Hello. In just a moment, we're going to present one of Hans Christian Andersen's immortal fairy tales. Our play is based on the most beautiful and best loved story he ever wrote, The Little Mermaid. This is a special occasion for me. Ever since I was a child, I've wanted to play the role of the innocent little mermaid who loses her heart to a land prince. And tonight, my dream has finally come true. Now, The Little Mermaid. Beloved Royal Highness, may he live forever. Thank you. On my birthday, a face longer than our journey. Ah, oh, Your Highness, time is like a slippery eel. I was only thinking about the past. Some battle fought upon some distant ocean. One of the thousand maids you kissed when you and the world were younger. No, my thoughts were of a royal infant I once held up to the high priest for his blessing. His wails were most unprincely, yet here he stands like a sword of the finest steel. Well tempered by a thousand blows from the palm of your hand. If the need arises, I can wield it again most deftly against your royal stubbornness. Those then were my thoughts. Better the thoughts of a thousand maidens. A storm, suddenly. Neptune, great god of the sea, let him live. Please live, please. I want you to live. Uh, come, come, come. We must return to the sanctuary before the sun reaches the mountains. It is a rule. Oh, why are there so many rules? And why should they apply to your princess? You must not question the rules. That, too, is a rule. Now, come. The sun's so warm, the wind's so clean. The world is so beautiful after a storm. And if we are late for the ritual of dusk, the high priest will himself become a hurricane. I'll take my chances. Let's run to that high rock and back. The tide's out. Of... Wait, there on the sand. Princess, princess, who'll come back? He's alive. He's a fool. Only a fool would dare drown to the sanctuary. Whatever are you doing? Your sacred robe and he's dripping wet. Would you let him die? how pale he is. 
We must bring him to the sanctuary. Nothing found on the beach may be brought to the sanctuary. No driftwood, no seashells, no starfish. But he's a man. That is even worse. There are several rules for those. But look at him. I see only an angry high priest. The shepherd's hut. We can bring him there. The shepherd's hut is a trespass. That is even worse than a rule. There we can find a warm fire and food and drink. How would you know? Oh, please. He's so cold and wet. There's no need to talk. You almost drowned. But the gods favored you. This is most unholy. I remember. The storm struck suddenly. I was drowning. You caught me. I? The waves seemed to part for you. It was a miracle. No, I did nothing. Nothing? I owe you my life. Can you stand? Here, lean on me. Wait. Who are you? She is a vestal maiden of the sanctuary and permitted to be viewed by no man. She serves only the gods. She is herself a goddess. Blasphemy! First the ruse, then a trespass, now blasphemy! Go! Go! I will take him to the shepherd's hut. Go! Pray you don't turn into a nanny goat. I must leave you. Leave me? Then I wish you'd left me to drown. Oh, Grandmother, his hair is as dark as mine is pale. His eyes are brown as seaweed dried in the sun. He's tall and his skin is sunlight. Round his neck, does he wear a golden crescent shaped like the new moon? You know him? You've seen him? He's a prince. A prince? As I am a princess. Where does he live? I must see him again. Why? I don't know. I only know how strange I feel both happy and in pain. Why do I feel so strange? Little one, you haven't fallen in love. Oh, no. I know what love is. Do you? Of course. I love you and I love Father. It's not quite the same. It's not? I'm in love with him. Then I'll swim to where he lives and call out to him. Child, he, he might not find you to his liking. How can you say that? Many of the mermen in the kingdom have told me I'm pleasing to look at. Oh, you're a very pretty mermaid. Then the prince will also think so. And I can swim faster than any mermaid in the seven seas. And I can sing for him and tell him stories of shipwrecks and the great whales. But you cannot dance. What does dance mean? It means you must have legs. Why? So that he can take you in his arms and whirl you around and around. Why should he want to do that? Because he's a land creature, and he cannot fall in love with a girl who cannot walk and run and dance. Not one who swims in the sea and wriggles on the sand. How do you know that? Never mind. It's sufficient that I know. Then you must know where I can find him. Oh, if I could make you understand. I only understand that if you won't tell me where he is, I'll find the prince myself. Is that you, my friends? Is that you, the great whale and the laughing porpoise? Is that you, the brave shark and the tiny minnow? <laughs> I have to reach the river and find the prince. No, no. I can't forget him. I'll never forget him. Six mermaids, five porpoises, and three whales have rushed to tell me how you sat day after day on a rock calling out to this land creature. <laughs> Tattlefish, just because I'm in love. Love? <laughs> oh, ridiculous. What could you know of love? Growing pains, my dear. My heart should know. My heart tells me I'm in love. I'm in love. You must treat me like a child. Stop acting like one. I'm very grown up, Father. 
Only a child could fall in love with an ugly, ridiculous land creature. He's not ugly or ridiculous. He's the most handsome. Handsome? <laughs> Can he swim? Father. All the best-looking, wealthiest mermen in the kingdom have asked for your hand. And any one of them will make you a truly responsible husband. So whom do you choose? A weakling who cannot live underwater for more than a minute. A cannibal. Yes. Who eats your dear little friends, mackerel and bluefish. Stop it. An outlandish freak who walks on two silly legs and hasn't even the ghost of a tail. I'll never love anyone but the prince. No. Never. This is an illness. I must speak to the royal physician. I'm not sick, father, and you know it. I have never understood how a mermaid thinks. <laughs> never. Oh, thank goodness. Here comes your grandmother. Hello, grandmother. Come beside me. Grandmother, please stop swimming around. Remember what the Sturgeon General said. No strenuous exercise, my dear. Nonsense. If my mother could swim for 400 years, so could I. <laughs> I enjoy it. Well, I hope you can talk some sense into your grandchild, because I can't. Oh, I give up. <sighs> oh, I'm not getting any younger. You're still the most beautiful one in the family. No flattery. I'm very angry with you. You're distressing your poor father. <laughs> poor father. Now, don't laugh. <laughs> And don't try to make me forget how willful you are. I'm not willful. I'm in love. You said so yourself. <laughs> Is there any difference? I intend to marry him, Grandmother. Child. I'm going to tell you something. Long, long ago, when I was your age, yes, I was your age once, as <laughs> strange as it may seem, I was in love with your prince's grandfather. Oh, there was a man. How magnificent he looked striding along the beach. Dark hair. Dark as a cavern. Tall, his skin like gold. And his voice. It was his voice I fell in love with. Then you do understand. Only too well. Why didn't you marry him? <sighs> oh. Once I dared to wave to him from, a, from the top of a wave. He answered from the shore. I swam towards the beach. He came running towards me, running on his fine, strong legs. He watched me come out of the water. And when he saw me wriggling on the sand, he laughed at me. Oh, no, Grandmother. How cruel. Men are cruel, even mermen. But men who live on land are crueler still. He laughed because you had a tail instead of legs. Hmm? Isn't there any way I can grow a pair of legs? No, there isn't. There must be a way. Isn't there? Oh, don't ask questions. I said there isn't. You're not telling the truth. There is a way. No. Whenever you curl your tail, you're telling a lie. Oh, really? If you know how I can grow legs, I'll do anything. <laughs> Child, it's easy to say that. I thought my love would give me courage, but when I had my chance, I didn't dare. Give me my chance. Are you sure you know what you're saying? I love him. You'll suffer anything, pain beyond endurance. Give me my chance. Oh, I never could refuse you anything. You're the most wonderful grandmother a mermaid ever had. What's that? Rub it. Wish, wish very hard. And may the gods be kinder to you than they were to me. Well, child, what can we do for you? Who are you? I am a barrister. What does barrister mean? A fancy word for lawyer, and a very successful one, too. How do you do? I represent several important clients, including the Merwitch. <gasps> the the Merwitch who lives in Sea Forest? 
I'll wager every time you disobeyed your nurse, she told you stories about the mer witch. I used to tremble so. <laughs> of course you did. A charming creature, the mer witch. Not only a client, but an old, old friend. She retains me as go-between. Preliminary questioning, contracts, and legal sundry matters. Uh, why am I here? My grandmother gave me this, this blue stone. <laughs> what are grandmothers coming to? I closed my eyes and, and wished I might stop being a mermaid and walk and, and run and dance on land. Can the merwitch grant my wish? Perhaps. For a price. What price? Let's get down to facts. Getting rid of a mermaid's tail. Mm, that will cost you nine black pearls. The real article. No shadrow, please. Oh, I'd never cheat the merwitch. Mm, you'd be surprised how many try. Now, to grow legs. Mm, that comes rather high. Twenty-four gold coins. Off the eyes of dead sailors. I'll fetch them. Wait. To reach the merwitch, swim at the dark of the moon, through the jaws of the black whale. Oh, no. Yes. But don't be like everyone else and get snapped in half. Click, cluck. What would happen? <laughs> A hideous death. And if I escape? That's good. It's worse. For then, you must swim through the enchanted sea forest, which is filled with the skeleton arms of thousands of landmen drowned in the sea. Every now and then, the bony arms come alive, and they'll seize you. Ah, oh, yes, the enchanted sea forest is most enchanting. Still want to get to the mare witch. In matters of love, it's essential to be brave. Yes. All right, then. But only if you escape the bony arms will you find the cave of the mare witch. All right. You will swim through the black jaws, through the sea forest, alone. 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 And don't forget the black pearls and the gold coins. <laughs> well, I'll see you at the Mare Witches. If you ever get there. Which I sincerely doubt. <laughs> 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 the same old story. Like grandmother, like granddaughter. The little fool insists she wants a pair of legs. She's in love with the land prince. <laughs> Isn't it delicious? <laughs> the untold agony true love inevitably brings. <laughs> oh, stop chattering, Zuzu. Let her never get here. Let her be strangled in the forest. But why? Because I'm in the mood. But think how amusing it will be to watch her heart break. Don't you agree? Give her legs, make her suffer. You settle too cheaply. What are nine black pearls and 24 gold coins compared with the bother of assembling that potion? Mm, afraid the potion won't work. Don't be nasty, Zuzu. She'll get her money's worth. Mm -hmm. I want to see you assemble that potion. <laughs> It might be fun. Mm. At least it would be someone amusing mm. to talk to. <laughs> Hand me my ball. Oh. Oh. What do you see?
hope she's managed the snapping jaws. Good. Is she in the enchanted sea forest? Yes. She swims like an eel. Give her legs, break her heart. Yes, get her here. Do it now. Let's have some real fun. Come to me, come to me, one, two. came off the eyes of dead sailors, I promise you. Scarcely worth my while. Please. You can't back out now. She can sue us for breach of contract. I keep telling you, my dear, that a verbal contract, yes. as attested by yes. a thousand yes. decisions... Yes, yes, is... yes! The women in your family never learn their lesson, do they? What lesson? Don't tell her, don't tell her, let her find out. Give her pain, give her legs. Ah, love, when you reach land, take this potion. Mm, sheer agony. From the very first, your body will burn like fire. The pain of growing legs is excruciating. Mm, there never was such pain. There's no backing out. Once you take this potion, there's nothing more I can do. Your tail will vanish, and your legs will be... Oh, I'm a sensational sorceress. <laughs> oh, how I wish I could be there to hear you scream. You'll just have to let me watch it on this thing. But before you decide, remember this. Men worship innocence, but they marry experience. Uh, don't tell her anymore. Don't tell her. No, let her find out for Keep herself. Keep still, the both of you, or I'll set you on each other. I may be a merwitch. But I will not let a royal princess of the sea take a potion without knowing the consequences. You're spoiling all the fun! Be quiet! It might be illegal. Now let me make my speech. Once you take this potion, you may never again be a mermaid. Never again see your father. Never again know your grandmother. Never again may you return to the sea. Listen. Come back, my dear one. Come back, little mermaid. Grandmother. Little daughter, come back. Father. Come back, my little one. Come back. Don't make me listen to them anymore. Now you know the consequences. I, I still wish to have legs. Well, there's more to know. No, if, no, don't tell her anymore. If you fail to marry the prince before 100 changes of the sea tide, you must die. Die, do you understand? Yes, yes, oh, yes. 100 sea tides, I understand. Be sure you do. It's hard to understand what it means to die at your age. When a mermaid dies, she changes into a drop of sea foam, tossed on the waves forever and ever. I... Aha! I'll take the potion. You have the gift of courage. Oh, no, I'm very frightened. But I love him. I hear you, my friends, far, far down there in the sea. I love you all. Forgive me, I must take the potion. Please, don't mourn. I'll miss you too, all of you. The great whale and the laughing porpoise. The brave shark and the tiny minnow.
Enough. Would a brighter melody please you? I remember from my youth a livelier tune is better for forgetting. I've heard enough music. Shall we talk of the wrestling matches or the foot races? There's a marathon runner Stop from Macedonia. Stop trying to coax a smile with a story or a jest. I am not some unhappy child. I did not think of you as being unhappy. You merely wear your pleasure sadly. What's this? A ray of sunlight in a prisoner's cell. Did you come to pick our flowers? I... I came here because there was no other place for me to come, Your Highness. We've met. I've heard of you in my kingdom. I, too, am of royal birth. A princess. Welcome. Where's your kingdom? Far, far away. And your ladies in waiting? I, I made this voyage alone. Where are you bound? Nowhere. But your family. I can't return to them. Ah, you've been banished. Yes. Not knowing where to go. I had hoped someone here might be kind enough to give me shelter. You're welcome to stay here as long as you wish. Thank you. I, I won't be a burden. I can sing and tell you stories and... And dance? I'll learn. Why do you stare at me so strangely? Have I seen you before? No, of course, as you said, your kingdom lies beyond my ken. Yes, Your Highness. And I was feeling pity for myself. You poor child. What's wrong? My, my legs pain me. It's nothing. Come. Lean on me. Indeed I did. This child is a joy to me. She's like a summer rain after a season of drought. Just so. A sovereign cure for melancholy. Will I ever forget this poor maiden limping into this very garden, her legs stiff and cramped from climbing the hill. And now soon, perhaps, she'll be our prize dancer. <laughs> Your Highness is laughing at me. Ah, uh, no. He would never laugh at you. We're grateful to you. For what? Every time I'm with you, you bring life back to me. Truly? Well, ask my dear friend here what a gruff and melancholy fellow I am when I'm not with you. He is right, my child. The ladies of the court exert no charms for him but you. With your modesty, your innocence. You are mocking me. If by any word I've hurt you, I beg your pardon. I know I've much to learn. No. Stay as you are. Your simple honesty is worth the wisdom of a dozen maidens. I needed a friend like you, a young sister my mother never bore. Since you've come to this palace, 50 sea tides have passed so happily. Only 50 left. What? Nothing. No matter what happens, I'll take care of you. I'll watch over you. I'd like to be more like other maidens. I told you, that would be commonplace. I've known only two maidens in my life that I could give my devotion to. You, sister, companion. The other? I speak no more of this. Why not? My heart struggles like a snared falcon when I think of her. Who is she? I will speak of something else. Won't you confide in me? You would understand. Who is the other maiden? One day, I nearly drowned when my ship foundered. Someone saved you. How quick you are to guess the truth. Yes, she saved me. A maiden as beautiful in face and form as her heart is kind. How can I hope to make her my bride? She serves as handmaiden to the gods. But I know this. If I can't marry her, I'll never marry. Right here in the palace, there might be someone who could bring you love. No, little princess. 
I wed her or no one. It was just a moment's weakness. How sweet you are. You're trembling. What's the matter? I'm sad because you're sad. Perhaps if you if you looked around you, you'd see someone else who loves you. And in time you could love her. Not till all the seas run dry. Come, we'll be more cheerful. Listen to the flute. Don't be sad because I'm sad. It needn't concern you. I beg of you, please help me. If your majesty will hear me... I hear no more. That is my last word. Your majesty, I must defend the boy. Remember, his upbringing was in my charge. It is my last word, I said. And if you value our friendship, it had better be your last word. I understand your loyalty to the prince and why you defend him. Your Majesty, you were young once yourself. No, I was never young. It's strange. My son takes after my father, who, as you know, almost ruined the kingdom by falling in love every other day. There was even, you may remember, gossip about a mermaid. At 12 years old, I swore I would not follow in my father's footsteps. At 18, I married for the good of my country, not for the sake of a pair of wide brown eyes and cherry red lips. And we honor you for it, Your Majesty. But remember, patience is a virtue also. Wait just a little longer. The prince will obey you. He will obey me now. Or by great Jupiter, I swear it. Leave us alone. At last, the melancholy calf arrives, late as usual. Sorry, Father. I have been hearing a sad, sad tale of a broken-hearted prince who was saved from drowning by a beautiful maiden. A charming tale, if a little shop-worn. The poor fellow almost lost his heart to this beautiful maiden, only to have her whisked away from him. It's enough to make a strong man weep. If it pleases you to ridicule my love. Love, you arrogant fop. Love! For a maid you've seen only once in your life. What was your purpose in fetching me here? I am announcing your nuptials to the princess of Thracia. What? Her father has agreed. Has she been told? Or is she too feeble in the head to care? How dare you use that tone with me? You are my only child. All my hopes lie with you. I have sworn to the blessed Aphrodite and to Apollo that I shall marry no one. I love the Vestal Maiden. Either you marry this princess or you face the prospect of death at the head of your troops. Troops? The king of Sandria has always coveted this kingdom. His troops are at our border. His army outnumbers ours by three to one. If our house and that of Thracia are allied in marriage, Sandria will not dare wage war on us. This is no trick of yours to outwit me? Every village will be plundered, every man sent into bondage. I see. I cannot fathom the depths of love like yours. All my life, I have loved only two things, my country and my son. Father? Which is it to be, your marriage or the destruction of our country? I will marry the princess. I had to wed the princess of Thracia. A marriage would prevent a terrible war. I had to obey. Of course. I beg of you, stay very close to me until the wedding. I'll do whatever you ask. I can just see her now, my bride to be. Ugly as a crow, mean as a she goat. Might your father change his mind? 
No, little one, you don't understand. This is a matter of diplomacy. What does diplomacy mean? Diplomacy is the breaking of a heart for the good of a country. I don't think I could face what lies ahead if it weren't for you. Be thankful to the gods that you're not in love hopelessly as I am. Tomorrow, my son, your wedding will unite our house to that of Thracia. In honor of this wedding, I have given the peasants 200 geese and 300 oxen. You are the soul of benevolence. And you, our little visitor, what can we give you? Tomorrow also marks the hundredth change of sea tide since you came to our country. You have become so dear to us, so like the daughter that we never had. Tell us your dearest wish that we may grant it. Not even you, sire, can grant me my wish. My liege. Yes. The king of Thracia and his daughter have arrived. Thank you for being at my side at this hour. Welcome. Ah, my old friend, this is a most happy day. My son. My son to be? Sire. This mountainous fool is the father of the shrew I'm about to marry. Where is your daughter? She lingered to look in a glass, as brides will do. She'll be here instantly. She'll arrive with crow's feet and a croaking voice. Smile, Your Highness. We must pretend to smile. Princess, remember? I've never forgotten. From the first moment. Oh, yes. Yeah. I loved you. I loved you. I gave up hope. My time at the sanctuary came to an end. I was allowed my freedom. I came home sad. No longer. No one is happier than I. Amazing. They actually seem to like each other. Quite unusual for this kind of arrangement. Indeed it is. A daughter? A daughter. Come here and greet the father of your betrothed. Daughter? By Jupiter, I can't believe my eyes. She doesn't even hear me. They actually seem to like each other. Your, your Highness, your, your Highnesses, this, this, this is most unseemly. Forgive me. I'm so ashamed at this moment of your happiness. If it weren't for her, I'd have lost all desire for living. Who? A little princess, banished from her land. She's like a sister, the sweetest, most endearing Sister? Girl. Really? <laughs> Jealous? Not of her. Wait till you see her. She's the most innocent. I beg of you, be as kind to her as she's been to me. She'll be a friend. Would you like her to be maid of honor at our wedding? She'd be pleased. Tomorrow, my last day to look at him. Tomorrow I die. I don't want to die. Neptune, do you hear me? I don't want to die. <laughs> She's bringing me pearls. As your attorney, my dear. Well, what I... does she want? Shh. That's the Mer Queen, Mother. I smell a deal. The last time your Royal Highness came to me, how in love you were. I was her age. He was all I wanted. I dreamed of dancing with him across a silver floor. You made that deal. You sold her that potion at a ridiculously low price, and then she was afraid to take it. So annoying, such a waste of my talent. She took it. She has suffered. She deserves her happiness. <laughs> Did you hear? <laughs> Listen, Grandmama. No one deserves happiness. The lucky ones get it. But the little mermaid has been one of the unlucky ones. 
I will give you anything if you will help her win her prince. Anything? Anything in the kingdom. No. Ah, for once you made a good suggestion. Now stand in the corner. I'll call you. I didn't want to ask this question in front of him. He's such a gossip. What question? Your age. The truth. 310 years old. Only 90 years left before you die? Please help her. You'd sacrifice anything? Anything. I'll take those 90 years. That's rock bottom. Take it or leave it. Well, I suppose 50 is enough. I don't want to be unfair. After all, you want to see your granddaughter live happily. I love life. It goes so quickly. Just as I thought. You were a coward about your prince, and now you're selfish about hers. Zuzu! Did she say yes? Huh? Did she say yes? Take your 50 years. This time, I made the deal. Now, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> there are documents to be drawn up. Uh, oh, hurry, she hasn't much time. As the party of the first part, you agree to give the party of the second part 50 years of your life upon the proper use of that dagger. Oh, my dear one, my little mermaid. You swam all that way? It's wonderful what one can do when one has to. The mermaid said I'd never see you again. She changed her mind. Now I haven't much time. Neither have I. Tomorrow when the vows are spoken, I will die. You will not die. I agreed. It has to be. You will not die. You will change into a mermaid again. And you will live again with all of us and with your prince. But how? He loves her. He will forget her. He will fall in love with you. Now, take this. Take it. Hold it firmly. Tonight, you must plunge it into the prince's heart. No. You love him. Yes. You want him to love you. Yes, but to kill him. He will not die. Not die when I stab him with this? He will change into a merman. And you will live out your 400 years together. Grandmother, tell everyone in the sea to come to our wedding. Then I shall buy you a ruby as large as the sun. How large is the sun? The sun is quite large, and you are breaking a solemn prenuptial law. You are not to view one another on the eve of your marriage. And where shall we go from Antioch? A caravan to Persepolis, and there I shall buy you a cape spun of gold and silk, and I shall drape it around your shoulder. Oh, indeed! It's getting late. We must go in. But we haven't finished planning our journey. We were about to discuss our sea voyage to Egypt. Dangerous waters in the moonlight. Come, my fluttering dove. Come, come. Little bride, and to think only yesterday I rocked you in your cradle. You're a mean old crab, but I love you. Come, <clears throat> come. Gods on Olympus, not till now did I know what it means to be alive. Thank you, Aphrodite, goddess of love, for bringing my beloved to me. Juan, what are you doing up so late? I couldn't sleep. I walked along the ocean. Strange, I've noticed how you love the sea. Be careful, you'll turn into a mermaid. No, Your Highness, I never will. Good night. Good night. Sleep well. 
Be happy for me. You look beautiful. Do I really? She was not always beautiful. As a little girl, she was quite puny. <laughs> not like you, child. Nature was kind to you. I'm not a child, but thank you. She didn't like games, music, dancing. Loved only the sea. Can you imagine? <laughs> I gave her my life. Sacrificed it willingly. You were brave. Ah, that is the secret of life, my dear. We must learn to make sacrifices. But then, you're too young to understand. I think you're ready. Oh, I'm trembling. Do all brides feel their hearts beating so? I've never wed, so I can't say. Highness, hast thou heard the great god Jupiter and Aphrodite, the goddess of love, and Apollo, the god of youth, bid us unite you to the princess of Thracia? I have. Princess of Thracia, hast thou? I have. I take thee as my beloved bride till the gods bring us to the Elysian fields. I take thee as my beloved husband until our lives are ended. I join you together as one. <laughs> Neptune, great god of the sea, I'm ready to die. Beloved daughter of the gods, have no fear. You are blessed. Love such as yours is as priceless as the perfumed ambergris on the green sea. It is only in giving that we receive. Live. Return to your family. Go home to the sea. And so the little mermaid returned to her family beneath the sea. Someday, perhaps, she would fall in love again. But already she had learned a profound lesson that bringing happiness to those we love can be the most important way of loving them. After Hans Christian Andersen died, the people in his town of Copenhagen decided to erect a monument to his greatness and the figure they chose to set up in their great harbor for all to remember him by was that of the Little Mermaid. Our thanks to Nina Foch, Kathleen Nesbitt, Donald Heron, Ray Walston, and all the other members of tonight's cast for their outstanding performances. Be sure to join us here next week for another exciting story. Until then, this is Shirley Temple wishing each of you a fond good night.
Hello. In just a moment, we're going to present one of Hans Christian Andersen's immortal fairy tales. Our play is based on the most beautiful and best loved story he ever wrote, The Little Mermaid. This is a special occasion for me. Ever since I was a child, I've wanted to play the role of the innocent little mermaid who loses her heart to a land prince. And tonight, my dream has finally come true. Now, The Little Mermaid. Beloved Royal Highness, may he live forever. Thank you. On my birthday, a face longer than our journey. Oh, Your Highness, time is like a slippery eel. I was only thinking about the past. Some battle fought upon some distant ocean. One of the thousand maids you kissed when you and the world were younger. No, my thoughts were of a royal infant I once held up to the high priest for his blessing. His wails were most unprincely, yet here he stands like a sword of the finest steel. Well tempered by a thousand blows from the palm of your hand. If the need arises, I can wield it again most deftly against your royal stubbornness. Those then were my thoughts. Better the thoughts of a thousand maidens. A storm, suddenly. Neptune, great god of the sea, let him live. Please live, please. I want you to live. <laughs> come, come, come. We must return to the sanctuary before the sun reaches the mountains. It is a rule. Oh, why are there so many rules? I mean, why should they apply to your princess? You must not question the rules. That too is a rule. Now come. The sun's so warm, the wind's so clean. The world is so beautiful after a storm. And if we are late for the ritual of dusk, the high priest will himself become a hurricane. I'll take my chances. Let's run to that high rock and back. The tide's out. Of... Wait, they're on the sand. Princess, princess, you'll come back. He's alive. He's a fool. Only a fool dared round to the sanctuary. Whatever are you doing? Your sacred robe and he's dripping wet. Would you let him die? how pale he is. 
We must bring him to the sanctuary. Nothing found on the beach may be brought to the sanctuary. No driftwood, no seashells, no starfish. But he's a man. That is even worse. There are several rules for those. But look at him. I see only an angry high priest. The shepherd's hut. We can bring him there. The shepherd's hut is a trespass. That is even worse than a rule. There we can find a warm fire and food and drink. How would you know? Oh, please. He's so cold and wet. There's no need to talk. You almost drowned. But the gods favored you. This is most unholy. I remember. The storm struck suddenly. I was drowning. You caught me. I? The waves seemed to part for you. It was a miracle. No, I did nothing. Nothing? I owe you my life. Can you stand? Here, lean on me. Wait. Who are you? She is a vestal maiden of the sanctuary and permitted to be viewed by no man. She serves only the gods. She is herself a goddess. Blasphemy! First the ruse, then a trespass, now blasphemy! Go! Go! I will take him to the shepherd's hut. Go! Pray you don't turn into a nanny goat. I must leave you. Leave me? Then I wish you'd left me to drown. Oh, Grandmother, his hair is as dark as mine is pale. His eyes are brown as seaweed dried in the sun. He's tall and his skin is sunlight. Round his neck, does he wear a golden crescent shaped like the new moon? You know him? You've seen him? He's a prince. A prince? As I am a princess. Where does he live? I must see him again. Why? I don't know. I only know how strange I feel. Both happy and in pain. Why do I feel so strange? Little one, you haven't fallen in love. Oh, no. I know what love is. Do you? Of course. I love you and I love father. It's not quite the same. It's not? I'm in love with him. Then I'll swim to where he lives and call out to him. Child, he, he might not find you to his liking. How can you say that? Many of the mermen in the kingdom have told me I'm pleasing to look at. Oh, you're a very pretty mermaid. Then the prince will also think so. And I can swim faster than any mermaid in the seven seas. And I can sing for him and tell him stories of shipwrecks and the great whales. But you cannot dance. What does dance mean? It means you must have legs. Why? So that he can take you in his arms and whirl you around and around. Why should he want to do that? Because he's a land creature. And he cannot fall in love with a girl who cannot walk and run and dance. Not one who swims in the sea and wriggles on the sand. How do you know that? Never mind. It's sufficient that I know. Then you must know where I can find him. Oh, if I could make you understand. I only understand that if you won't tell me where he is, I'll find the prince myself. How cruel. Men are cruel, even mermen. But men who live on land are crueler still. He laughed because you had a tail instead of legs. Hmm? Isn't there any way I can grow a pair of legs? No, there isn't. There must be a way. Isn't there? Oh, don't ask questions. I said there isn't. You're not telling the truth. There is a way. No. Whenever you curl your tail, you're telling a lie. Oh, really? If you know how I can grow legs, I'll do anything. <laughs> Child, it's easy to say that. I thought my love would give me courage. But when I had my chance, I didn't dare. Give me my chance. Are you sure you know what you're saying? I love him. You'll suffer anything, pain beyond endurance. Give me my chance. Oh, I never could refuse you anything. You're the most wonderful grandmother a mermaid ever had. What's that? Rabbit. Wish. Wish very hard, and may the gods be kinder to you than they were to me.
Well, child, what can we do for you? Who are you? I am a barrister. What does barrister mean? A fancy word for lawyer. And a very successful one, too. How do you do? I represent several important clients, including the Merwich. <gasps> the, the Merwich who lives in Seaforest? <laughs> I'll wager every time you disobeyed your nurse, she told you stories about the Merwich. I used to tremble so. <laughs> of course you did. A charming creature, the Merwich. Not only a client. But an old, old friend. She retains me as go-between. Preliminary questioning, contracts, and legal sundry matters. Uh, why am I here? Uh, my grandmother gave me this, this blue stone. <laughs> what are grandmothers coming to? I closed my eyes and, and wished I might stop being a mermaid and walk and, and run and dance on land. Can the merwitch grant my wish? Perhaps, for a price. What price? Let's get down to facts. Getting rid of a mermaid's tail. Mm, that will cost you nine black pearls. The real article, no shadro, please. Oh, I'd never cheat the merwitch. Mm, you'd be surprised how many try. Now, to grow legs, mm, that comes rather high. Twenty-four gold coins. Off the eyes of dead sailors. I'll fetch them. Wait. To reach the merwitch, swim at the dark of the moon, through the jaws of the black whale. Oh, no. Yes, but don't be like everyone else and get snapped in half. Click, cluck. What would happen? <laughs> A hideous death. <gasps> And if I escape? That's good. It's worse. For then you must swim through the enchanted sea forest, which is filled with the skeleton arms of thousands of landmen drowned in the sea. Every now and then, the bony arms come alive, and they'll seize you. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, yes. The enchanted sea forest is most enchanting. Still want to get to the mare witch? In matters of love, it's essential to be brave. Yes. All right, then. But out. Is that you, my friends? Is that you, the great whale and the laughing porpoise? Is that you, the brave shark and the tiny minnow? <laughs> I have to reach the river and find the prince. No, no, I can't forget him. I'll never forget him. Six mermaids, five porpoises, and three whales have rushed to tell me how you sat day after day on a rock calling out of this land creature. <laughs> Tattlefish, just because I'm in love. Love? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, ridiculous. What could you know of love? Growing pains, my dear. My heart should know. My heart tells me I'm in love. I'm in love. You must treat me like a child. Stop acting like one. I'm very grown up, Father. Only a child could fall in love with an ugly, ridiculous land creature. He's not ugly or ridiculous. He's the most handsome. Handsome? <laughs> Can he swim? Father. All the best-looking, wealthiest mermen in the kingdom have asked for your hand. And any one of them will make you a truly responsible husband. So whom do you choose? A weakling who cannot live underwater for more than a minute. A cannibal. Yes, who eats your dear little friends, mackerel and bluefish. Stop it. An outlandish freak who walks on two silly legs and hasn't even the ghost of a tail. I'll never love anyone but the prince. Oh. Never. 
This is an illness. I must speak to the royal physician. I'm not sick, Father, and you know it. I have never understood how a mermaid thinks. <laughs> never. Oh, thank goodness. Here comes your grandmother. Hello, Grandmother. Come beside me. Grandmother, please stop swimming around. Remember what the Sturgeon General said. No strenuous exercise, my dear. Nonsense. If my mother could swim for 400 years, so can I. Mm. <laughs> I enjoy it. Well, I hope you can talk some sense into your grandchild, because I can't. Oh, I give up. <sighs> oh, I'm not getting any younger. You're still the most beautiful one in the family. No flattery. I'm very angry with you. You're distressing your poor father. <laughs> poor father. Now, don't laugh. <laughs> and don't try to make me forget how willful you are. I'm not willful. I'm in love. You said so yourself. <sighs> Is there any difference? I intend to marry him, grandmother. Child. I'm going to tell you something. Long, long ago, when I was your age, yes, I was your age once, as <laughs> strange as it may seem, I was in love with your prince's grandfather. Oh, there was a man. How magnificent he looked, striding along the beach. Dark hair? Dark as a cavern. Tall, his skin like gold? And his voice. It was his voice I fell in love with. Then you do understand. Only too well. Why didn't you marry him? <sighs> oh. Once, I dared to wave to him from, a, from the top of a wave. He answered from the shore. I swam towards the beach. He came running towards me, running on his fine, strong legs. He watched me come out of the water. And when he saw me wriggling on the sand, he laughed at me. <gasps> No, Grandmother. Only if you escape the bony arms will you find the cave of the Merewitch. All right. You will swim through the black jaws, through the sea forest, alone. Alone? Alone. And don't forget the black pearls and the gold coins. <laughs> well, I'll see you at the Merewitch's. If you ever get there, which I sincerely doubt. <laughs> 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 the same old story. Like grandmother, like granddaughter. The little fool insists she wants a pair of legs. She's in love with the land prince. <laughs> Isn't it delicious? <laughs> the untold agony true love inevitably brings. <laughs> oh, stop chattering, Zuzu. Let her never get here. Let her be strangled in the forest. But why? Because I'm in the mood. But think how amusing it will be to watch her heart break. Don't you agree? Give her legs, make her suffer. You settle too cheaply. What are nine black pearls and 24 gold coins compared with the bother of assembling that potion? Mm, afraid the potion won't work. Don't be nasty, Zuzu. She'll get her money's worth. Mm -hmm. I want to see you assemble that potion. <laughs> It might be fun. At least it would be someone amusing to <laughs> talk to. <laughs> Hand me my ball. Oh. Oh. What do you see?
she's managed the snapping jaws. Good. Is she in the enchanted sea forest? Yes. Do it now. Let's have some real fun. Come to me, come to me. One, two, three. They're, they're very rare pearls. And the coins came off the eyes of dead sailors, I promise you. Scarcely worth my while. Please. You can't back out now. She can sue us for breach of contract. I keep telling you, my dear, that a verbal contract, yes. as attested by yes. a thousand decisions... Yes, yes, is... yes! The women in your family never learn their lesson, do they? What lesson? Don't tell her, don't tell her, let her find out. Give her pain, give her legs. Ah, oh, love. When you reach land, Take this potion. Mm, sheer agony. From the very first, your body will burn like fire. The pain of growing legs is excruciating. Mm, there never was such...